Hello and welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today I'm offering a focus in this existential feature on the issue of representing the unrepresentable. And I'm in Berlin at Daniel Liebeskin's amazing space, the Jewish Museum. And I specifically want to focus on aspects of design, deconstruction, and abstraction as they relate to dealing with topics such as the Holocaust that are clearly challenging, if not impossible, to represent. And let me read you an important project description given by Daniel Liebeskin in terms of the inspiration behind the design of the Jewish Museum in Berlin. The new design, which was created a year before the Berlin Wall came down, was based on three conceptions that form the museum's foundation. First, the impossibility of understanding the history of Berlin without understanding the enormous intellectual, economic, and cultural contribution made by the Jewish citizens of Berlin. Second, the necessity to integrate physically and spiritually, spiritually the meaning of the Holocaust into the consciousness and memory of the city of Berlin. Third, that only through the acknowledgement and incorporation of this erasure and void of Jewish life in Berlin can the history of Berlin and Europe have a human future. I wanted to read you this quotation from Liebeskin from his project design because I think it addresses his concept behind the museum and also addresses some of the criticisms that have been received. Uh, I think the postmodernist deconstructive approach, the abstracted approach that he took to the design wasn't received well by everyone and perhaps some wanted more representational, representational and traditionalist um, understandings or interpretations that could be applied to the design of a museum that focuses on Jewish history and also, of course, the Holocaust. If you think of other museums that focus on genocide or the Holocaust in D.C. and the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles, certainly there are more representational and traditionalist approaches to dealing with such a difficult topic. I want to make the point, though, that I think in this case, um, as we read some of the quotations here of the architect of Liebeskin's work, just when you enter the new part of the museum, he was trying to deal with issues that are unrepresentable and still trying to represent those. One of the ways that he does this, as you can see the description here of one of the memorials to the Holocaust, which I didn't feel uh, comfortable representing here, I don't think it's appropriate, but it's a space like many others that is a void. And it seems to me that the void, metaphorically, was incredibly important in Liebeskin's design of the museum. This idea of the voided void, of representing something that you cannot represent, is taken to extreme existential levels at the Jewish Museum in Berlin. And I think it's, as a museum, for me, one of the best examples of representing the unrepresentable. And I wanted to show you a few more examples of how Liebeskin uses negative space and I think plays on metaphors of absence and presence in terms of trying to represent Jewish history in Berlin and also the horrors of the Holocaust. Many examples of empty space and specifically as he constructed this throughout the museum, uh, he was partially inspired by uh, Walter Benjamin's work, One Way Street, and there are a lot of uh, interesting aspects of this design that I encourage you to read about online, to read Liebeskin's project briefs and the other analyses that have been done in the museum. Again, the void, I think, here is used to incredible metaphorical and existential potential in focusing on unrepresentable histories. And here, in one of the void spaces within the museum, we have an installation by Menashe Kaddishman called Fallen Leaves. And as you can see here, one of the effects of this aspect of representing the unrepresentable is using abstraction and also using sensory aspects. As you can see, visitors are encouraged to walk on these faces, on these representations of victims of the Holocaust. And I think this creates some startling existential and incredibly disturbing realizations as you think about the horrors of this part of dark human history. And this is one of many ways, I believe, that abstraction, conceptualization, negative space, and the void are used to remarkable and disturbing effect here at the Jewish Museum in Berlin. 
And I want to focus on one final space as we consider this museum in Berlin, and specifically it's Liebeskind's Garden of Exile. As you can see here from the plaque that greets the visitor as you enter the space, there's a significance to the number of columns and their arrangement, and then also I think very significantly to geometric form. As you can see here, the garden's form, the square, is the only completely rectangular form in the building. So this abruptness, this con contrast with the angularity, the juxtapositions, uh, the movement that you feel as you walk through the rest of the new museum, I think is, is quite startling. As we zoom in on the quote here, I, I think for me this was one of the most powerful uh, and disturbing aspects of my visit to the museum. Quoting Liebeskind here, one feels a little bit sick walking through it, but it is accurate because that is what perfect order feels like when you leave the history of Berlin. And I think for me, what was significant about this space, as I begin to show you here my video walking through it, is that, and it's very hard to describe here, you have to certainly visit, the ways that the columns function with the ground below, the ground below uh, being uneven bricks, and a third element, there is an incline that is provided as you walk through these what could be described as passageways through these columns. The overall effect of this, and I think the sense of isolation as you look up and you see uh, or experience be being trapped, I think the overall effect of this is incredibly disturbing in an existential sense. And it's really hard to describe, and I've described this to friends and colleagues who study spaces, and uh, I just offered the idea that, like Liebeskind's quote here, you really do feel this sense of uneasiness, almost a queasiness as you walk through the space. And I think this is accomplished through a number of design means. And for me, uh, is one of the most stunning designs I've experienced, particularly a design that deals with such a dark and disturbing period of human history. So I hope you enjoyed this video feature, and I will have an, one additional video feature on representing the unrepresentable that also deals with a similar space in the city of Berlin.